This conference will now this conference will now be recorded. Welcome to this presentation of the CRE CPLC Catechist Roles and Applications Using the My AMS System Effectively. My name is Michelle Hokinson and I'm the Associate Director for Evangelization Resources at the Archdiocese for the Military Services. Let us begin with an opening prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly and Faithful Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers, forming us with your word, and encouraging us as we gather. Please use us to love and serve you and all people, inspired by the Holy Spirit, in the name of your Son. You created us, you redeem us by your mercy and love, and you strengthen us by your spirit. We give ourselves into your service with the aid of the angels and saints, and especially your blessed mother. May we love you and love others with all our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So we talked about these questions of the day a little bit ahead of, of our presentation. How has your experience with the AMS application system been? How can it be improved? How can the AMS website better support your faith formation, religious education efforts? And I look forward to hearing more suggestions and ideas after the presentation today during our chat. So let's begin with coordinator and catechist applications. And you all are familiar with the application, so um, CPLCs, bear with me a little bit while I talk about um, the CREs and the catechist applications, because their applications are slightly different, and some of you hold both roles, so you're familiar with all the applications. But um, there's a requirement now, and mostly new uh, catech or CREs will need to supply their baptismal date and place information. Um, once it's on file at the AMS, uh, uh, you know, with your profile, you never need to submit it again, and we do not need a certificate. So once in a while, someone scans in a certificate and sends it to me, that is not necessary. And if you can't find your, your baptismal certificate, you can send the approximate date. And I'm sure you will know the place where you were baptized, so that's no problem. Child and youth protection, as you, you all know, has become very important um, at all levels. So um, it's, it's called the CYP uh, Program Completion Certificate or the SET, it, the Safe Environment Training. And so you'll see both of these acronyms on the AMS website. And um, again, this is for all CREs and catechists have to have the, the CYP completion certificate on file um, uh, with connected to your profile. So you've been part of the system and you need to do that annual renewal. CREs renew annually as do CPLCs, um, but CREs, we, we have a change in our policy and I wanted to just touch on that today. CREs used to um, renew every not, or every September, and now it's changed to one year anniversary date or the end date of your contract, whichever comes first. So that's when your renewal application will be due. And if you send me an application and you have, you know, more time on your contract and it's not yet been a year, you know, I, I can accept applications and it goes into the system as a future assignment. So there's no wrong way to do this. Please just um, send those renewal applications. I'll let you know if anything is missing and um, 
everything can be added to your application through an email message to me through evangelization resources. So no worries about going back and trying to attach uh, certificates or um, you know, add information. We found from our system administra administrator that it's just not possible right now with the system we have in place for applicants to go back, open their applications, and add information unless you're a catechist. And here's the exception to the rule, catechists are able to go in and add course information. So um, that's a difference between the applications for CREs and catechists. And then of course, catechists renew every three years by taking a new course. All right. So then another thing about those renewals. The renewal applications allow the AMS to automatically update the directories. And this is so important for the bishops and the priests to be able to look at the directories and see who the current uh, people are in the, in the positions in the field and be able to contact you if they need to. So um, please, the renewals are so very important and um, I can't stress that enough. Also, if you have a new priest coming on board, he's able to go into the system and learn about your program before he even gets there. So he can be familiar with you know, the CPLC, CRE, the catechists, see how many certified catechists there are. And it, it kind of shows the health of your Catholic program when you do have you know, so your, you know, all those positions filled and a lot of certified catechists. So it's always good to make sure everybody's sending in their, their renewal applications for those roles. And then the final reason to renew is um, we have to look at reports on the AMS end and the renewals allow our system to be able, we can go in, we can compile reports and we can see how many installations don't have CPLCs or CREs or you know, catech certified catechists. So all very important information, all very useful for supporting you all in the field as well as the staff at AMS. So the, the applications will go through these directions. I know so many of you are familiar with these, um, but for the future uh, folks re uh, looking at this, presentation. So all CPLC, CREs, and catechists will need it to create a profile if you don't already have one on the AMS portal. And please try to avoid creating duplicates. What happens is sometimes if you can't log in um, and you probably only need to reset your password, which you can request to, to have a reset passport link sent to your email. And so um, try to avoid creating duplicates. Um, just go to millarch.org and everybody's familiar with the little My AMS blue tab up in the right hand corner. Create your profile or if you have one just log in. When creating a profile use your personal email address not the installation one. And the reason for that is sometimes, especially with COVID, we found if you had to work from home, uh, some coordinate, coordinators were not able to log into their installation email. And that could be um, for you know, security purposes. So um, it's very important to use the personal email address. Also, if you use your personal email address, you get to keep your email. And um, if you do PCS and you need to go to that email for follow-up, you'll have access to your messages. Otherwise, if it's an installation email, you might be disconnected from that email. So very important reasons to use the personal email address. When you are applying or filling out the application, the installation name is, is very important because 
Um, sometimes I get applications that say individual instead of installation, and it doesn't allow us to know um, where you'll be working and which priest you'll be working with. So if you fill in that installation name of where you'll be working in your coordinator position, we are able to always locate the, the priest who will be approving your application. And then finally, uh, your contract start and end dates are important and no application can be advanced in the process toward approval unless we have those dates. All right, so let's see if we can go to a, uh, an application. So this is my profile page on the, the AMS, my AMS, and go to my applications. Hopefully I'm still up in the system and it's not timed me out. Let's see. It's a little slow. There we are. Okay, so I click the My Applications tab. I'm gonna scroll down through the applications. And here we go, CPLCs, click here. CREs, click here. Catechists, click here. It's the same whether you're new or whether you're renewing. All the same applications are used. So let's go ahead and click on the CRE. So the contract date, let's say today, uh, let's say for contract and one year from today, because we are now doing one year from the date either your contract begins uh, or the date your contract will end. Okay, everything looks good. So it asks for the current installation. They have me on file for the Archdiocese for the Military Services USA, so we're good there. So that's it for that um, application. And so um, some of the, the misunderstanding that had gone on was we were under the impression in the Office of Faith Formation that you were able to go back and add information, which it doesn't allow. And it doesn't ask for enough information. So we're working on a new um, application form, but until that uh, is in place, we're gonna be using these old ones that you're familiar with. And if you ever cannot add information like your CYP or your baptismal information, please just email it in, reply to the email asking for the information and we will fill it in to your profile for you. So for CRE and AMS catechists, um, first of all, we'll start with the catechists. Of course, we need your course information. And um, I do have a number, I have about 20 catechists who have applied for certification and they haven't supplied course information. So they're kind of languishing in the system, but that's very important. And catechists can go in and add their course information. CREs and courses. CREs, you all who are CREs are um, requested to discern further faith formation, whether it be a certificate or a degree program, or maybe you're thinking, I can't do this right now. Discernment is all that's requested. And of course, our, our faith formation director, Jose, will be happy to discern with you about what the possibilities are for your situation right now. We know that requires prayer and um, a lot of thoughtfulness. So that's all that's asked. And CREs, we really encourage all of your catechists to be AMS certified. 
Again, that suggests the health of your program. It means your catechists are fully engaged. They're, you know, forming their faith even further. As we all know, forming our faith is a lifetime experience and continuing it is, will just enhance, you know, your ability to evangelize and share the faith. Okay, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the My AMS portal. Um, first, when you log into your My AMS portal profile page, you'll see you have a, a header bar with objects along the top, all the different tabs you can click on. And we're going to go to that page in a minute, but um, what, what I recommend is to open every tab and see what is available to you on your profile page. And, um, and CREs, you do not have much on your profile page. For those of you who have uh, tried opening those tabs, um, we know that, and that's what we talked about that a little bit in the beginning. We're looking for suggestions. What would you like to see added to your uh, profile page? So let's take a look and um, we're going to go back to my home profile page. I have, this is what CPLC um, access looks like on the portal. And it is so much more than CREs. So that's why I, I really wanted the CREs to see what the difference is. So. On the CRE, or excuse me, CPLC profile page, they have access. This is their resources tab. So you can see they have, starting at the top, they have the latest so whatever the archbishop wants you to know and it's most current will be listed at the top of the page under resources and so here it is i mean this is from march but we're still in the midst of you know the covid health emergencies so that's what's at the top of the cplc resources tab then it goes into the bishop's listing uh, for confirmandi and guidance for the the pastoral visits the SET or CYP training. Here you'll, you'll find the Archbishop's memo about uh, the CYP and the different policy. And then the last section of the resources tab has all of these links that give you know, important information to CPLCs. And we'd like to expand this as well. Uh, maybe items, for your bulletins, um, I would definitely love suggestions from CPLCs as well on how we can improve their, the resources page, um, the calendar, you know, anything that would be of assistance to you because we exist to help you in the field. That is what we do at the AMS. All right. So a little story here, um, I w had been teaching, I had been a catechist for 11 years. Um, this was about 20 years ago. And somebody mentioned in a faith study, the Great Commission. And I had no idea what the Great Commission was. I had never heard that. And I was, had made all my sacraments, you know, been through Catholic school and CCD, kind of a combination. Um, did many faith studies, and when they said, you know, it's when Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I was like, okay, that's called the Great Commission. Why did I not learn about this when I was confirmed? So I always try to make a point of talking a little bit about the Great Commission and uh, 
I also have it here as the great commission because I feel we are on a commission with Jesus. He has commissioned us to go out and preach the good news and we need to not only be equipped to do that, but we are on the mission of equip, equipping others to do that. So it's just something I like to share with you just as a little reminder. And I just love the, talking about the Great Commission. So before we close in prayer, I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar today. Um, I love my job working at the AMS and I love the opportunity to support you however I can do that. So if you haven't heard from me in an email or any type of message, um, please do not hesitate to contact me at the AMS and I will, if I don't know the answer, I will find it for you if it's possible. So let us close with this prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father of all families, you have called us to serve the family in truth and love as catechists. May we be faithful to this call, rooted in your word and open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May we use these gifts especially the gifts of faith, hope, and love, to serve the family as a witness to you, who are love and life and the source and destiny of all families. Let your spirit enlighten our minds and strengthen our hearts so that we may be a path of Christ's love to all families. Through the intercession of Mary and Joseph, we pray for the church, the bride of Christ, whose mission to build a civilization of love passes through the family. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.